Hey everybody, this is Alex Merced from alexmercedcoder.com and welcome to the final video in this sort of Mongoose JS course. So now you guys got now know sort of the basic thrust of how to use Mongoose. So you can create models, you can relate models to build out your applications. But there's a lot more that Mongoose can do. So mainly where you're going to go for that, the documentation. The doc and then also you might want to read the MongoDB documentation for a little bit more about the database itself. Okay. Because Mong the Mongoose documentation is going to focus on how to use the Mongoose library, which allows you to work with Mongo in JavaScript. The Mongo documentation is going to show you a little bit more about how the database actually works, so you can kind of think more about those performance type issues and structure and stuff like that. But just to kind of give you some some of the some of the things that I think are are pertinent to go like take a look at. Okay, like again, if you go to the schema section, I'll tell you like all the different types of properties and all the different cool things you can do when you're setting up your schema. So like here are the different types. And you can learn about like the different aspects of those types. Um, <clears throat> here it tells you about like how you can add methods. So like if you want to have built-in functions into your models, like you know have a function that brings up information or does some sort of calculation based on that object's properties. Here it talk, talks to you how you can create instance methods. So like if I want to make sure that like every dog, when I get a dog object from a database, automatically has this function that does like makes the dog bark or tell me who its owner is or something like that, I can, again, add an instance method. If I want to create a method that is on the dog model that allows me to do sort of like um, other types of, not necessarily one dog doing a thing, but like a, a, a sort of global method for maybe like finding a dog, like customizing some of the functionality of how I query. So that way I, don't, I can make my query simpler, like maybe create a, a simpler update method so I don't have to pass the same options over and over again, I, I can then use statics where I can build in custom methods. And then, so here you can kind of read documentation how you do it. It's pretty straightforward. Um, if you understand classes and like static and instant methods and object-oriented programming, this will be super intuitive. If you don't know that stuff, you should probably explore that stuff first. Okay, um, query helpers. So these are all the cool things you can do, okay? Uh, creating something that's like a secondary index and again the concept of an index is just it's something that generally what an index means if you ever use like a, a textbook you generally have an index at the bot at the end of the book and it allows you to do a quick lookup of certain things so it'll tell you like the first page where like a term appears um, so you can specify certain fields as indexes which means that the database will create a separate sort of index you know basically imagine that sort of like quick lookup abstraction uh, for finding data in that particular uh, thing. Um, you don't want to do it on every field. Some people are tempted to like, well, why not make everything index? So it's really quick to look up by anything. But then you're using up more space. And then also when you add data, all those indexes have to be updated. So in updates take a lot longer. So generally you want to think like, okay, what do I usually search by? If I usually search by name a lot, then maybe name is something that's good to have as an index. Um, so generally always kind of think about like sort of what are the things you search the properties you search a lot, those things may be good indexes. And that's the same thing goes for any kind of database. Um, uh, virtuals, let's see here, do I remember what virtuals are? Let's see here. The document properties that you can get in set, but do not get persistent on MongoDB. The getters are useful for formatting combining fields. Okay, got it, these are virtual fields. So these are fields that will exist on the, 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 the object. So let's say, I, so in this case, actually, their example is perfect. Um, let's say you have an object that has like, a, a, a first name and a last name field, okay? But you want to be able to um, have a, be able to just bring up the name, but you still wanna have the first name and last name field saved separately in the database, okay? What you can do is you can create a virtual field. So you'll see here, person.schema.virtual full name, okay? And then you can say, hey, anytime whenever I access full name, what it's gonna do is just concatenate first and last name. So now I can access that property on any, in this case, any uh, person object and get full name. There is no full name that's being saved in the database. It's just taking the last and first name that's already saved in the database, and making it easier for me to access. So that's what a virtual property is. Aliases, so there's a lot of cool stuff you can do here. So this is anything with schemas is gonna be here in the schema section. Um, but then there's also models. Okay, so here you can like learn more about like models and here's what they'll talk about like querying models and basically doing some cool stuff there. Uh, sub documents. So again, you can actually have documents inside documents. So I can actually say like, hey, uh, the type, you know, I could have just said owner. Um, I could have gone over here. And when I did, going back to the code actually, 
instead of saying this is an object ID type, I could have actually said the type is owner. And then you'd have to pass an owner object and the owner object would be nested inside the dog object and have its own separate ID. You can do that. Um, I generally find that gets a little more complicated than it needs to be. It's not that complicated if you really know JavaScript really well, it, it, because it's just it's just an object at the end of the day. Um, but it but basically you have to realize that when you query, you can't query for the sub document. You have to query for the parent document and then you know then go grab it from the nested path. Um, so usually having the separate co separate collections using the references is probably going to be a simpler way to go depending on what you're trying to do. Okay, but you can read about how like sub documents work there. Here's like the thing about the populate method, um, timestamps. If you want to read about timestamps, uh, also. But that's basically you have that there. But bottom line, like that's that's Mongo, and and this is how you use Mongoose JS to in order to work with Mongo in your JavaScript applications. Is Mongoose the only tool for working with Mongoose in JavaScript? Not necessarily. Like if I look up Mongo ODM. Object Document Manager, which is a tool for working with Mongo, you'll see like there's lots of them: Mongo DB Hooks, Mongo Mongo ODB. Uh, you know, you'll find different ones that will allow you to work with Mongo. Um, but MongoJS is definitely probably the most popular. And then other languages have their own libraries for working with Mongo. Um, and that goes it's the same logic for any database. So hopefully you found this course useful. Uh, my name is Alex Merced. Subscribe. I'm always putting out more videos, teaching you more things about programming. Have a great day and enjoy.